Hi, my name's David Hall, otherwise known as Solid Brick Studios on YouTube. Lego has sent over a very large package. They told me it's Lego Star Wars related and that's it. So I don't know what's inside. I have an idea of what it could be. It honestly gives me goosebumps thinking about the set I hope it is. So we're just gonna have to unbox it <laughs> and find out for ourselves. They also told me we're gonna be doing a question and answer with the Lego Star Wars design team. So that's also really exciting. Definitely stay tuned for the whole video to see that. Without further ado, let's get into this. the Ultimate Collector Series Republic Gunship. Wow. It's even better in person. Um, incredibly, incredibly heavy. That front image. I'm ready, I'm ready to do this. On the back of the box, there's multiple images from Attack of the Clones, which is what this set is based off of. There's some information on its dimensions. It's over two feet long and over two feet wide. There is additional details that we'll be talking about here very soon. There's even details for the rocket launchers on the very top of the Republic gunship, which is pretty incredible. And as you can see, based off the minifigures to the scale of the model, looks to be pretty big. So now, let's go ahead and unbox this UCS Republic gunship. Of Lego Star Wars fans are a little bit mixed on keeping their boxes, but I have to say this is one of the most beautiful boxes, box art, and just holy cow, this is a keeper. Do not throw this box away. <laughs> Here's some of the new special elements that are included in the set. As you can see, a lot of brand new exclusive printed pieces for this set. Got some Technic rods also. And here is the instruction booklet that's included. Stickers are also in this packaging.
So the Republic gunship is also known as the LAAT, or Low Altitude Assault Transport. There's some more information here on the plaque sticker, and boy, can I not wait to put this on. Here's some of the stickers that come in this set. Here's our very thick instruction booklet. It is over 500 pages long. And boy, this thing looks absolutely crazy. I cannot wait to start building this. So what's very special about the Ultimate Collector Series Republic gunship is it was actually the winner from a poll from earlier in February of 2020 where LEGO Star Wars fans were given the ability to choose between three different sets for what the next UCS set would be. Between those was the Republic gunship, the Nebulon B frigate, and a TIE bomber. The Republic gunship was the winner, as it states right here in the very first page when you open the instruction booklet. It's even signed by Jens, the director of LEGO Star Wars, and someone who will actually be interviewing here in just a few minutes. Moving on to the next page, you can see Jens and Hans. Hans was actually the designer of the Republic gunship. He's also the designer of the very iconic Ultimate Collector series, Millennium Falcon. So I have no doubt that this will be quite the incredible build. I absolutely love this line. The shroud of the dark side has fallen, begun the Clone Wars has. This is the very first Ultimate Collector series Clone Wars set that we've ever gotten. And I could not be more thrilled. I actually remember seeing this picture and those Star Wars ship breakdown books. Those are those are a lot of fun. I can't believe they included that in the uh, instruction booklet. Man, it's just incredible. So this is pretty cool. There's actually a page called The Origin of the Clone Troopers, which talks about uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi visiting Kamino for the first time, realizing that 200,000 units were ready and more than a million on the way. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's very exciting to see in the instruction booklet. So it's broken down into 17 bag sections, so you can see the different uh, sections that bags will create the gunship over time. Looks to be quite the huge build. I absolutely love, I haven't even built the model and I'm just seeing the color scheme right here. This looks so good. And now we get to start building. You guys just want to start with like a quick introduction of who you guys are, what your uh, role is at the LEGO Group. Yeah, I'm uh, Jens Brunwald Frederiksen. I am design director and uh, I am responsible for the model development for LEGO Star Wars. I'm Hans Burkhard Schlömer. I'm a designer on LEGO Star Wars and for a couple of years now. Awesome. So which one of you had the hand in building the set? I guess that would be, be my hands. Uh, Jens handed me the task and then I, I took over. And yeah, uh, as you can, can imagine, with a set of this size, you uh, have more time to work on it than on a smaller playset. And yeah, uh, as it turned out, uh, in order to meet the price point, uh, I had to spend quite, a, a, quite an amount, a amount of money. This is why we are having this quite sizable model sitting here with a quite uh, spectacular wingspan and size. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. I uh, So I am currently, as, uh, as we just talked about, I'm in the midst of building my model right now. Haven't gotten to the wings yet, but uh, I'm already just like shocked about how long it is getting to already. I'm just like, okay, I was, I was building the first section right here. I was like, oh, this isn't too big. And then I like add this next portion on it. And I'm like, oh my God, this thing's getting huge. That is um, exactly what I just told, told Jens, what I think, what I was expecting the building experience would be for people. Once they, they build this section first here, mm -hmm. I was thinking, wow, this is quite sizable. 
And then they have to build this long boom and put it on here, this huge overhang. And that's when everybody will start to realize, wow, this will be the size of this model. Oh, okay. oh boy. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna be interviewing you guys while mm -hmm. attempting to continue to build the set. So we'll see. I've never done this before, so this is fun. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, and get into some of the questions that I have for you guys. So the first question I have is: This was a set fans voted for. Uh, was it hard designing a set that had much more pressure than usual uh, since expectations were so high? Yeah, you know we we are professionals here and uh, I would say the pressure is more or less uh, the, the, the same doesn't matter if it's a small set or or an especially big set or who, whoever wished us to make it at the end of the day uh, it goes through the usual process it needs to be approved by Lucasfilm and there's always the same pressure to, to get it right I would say I, I, I though because it was a fame uh, for some but because of that uh, I felt a little bit of pressure uh, and, and, and uh, but I, yeah, we're always doing our best, and uh, we are super happy with the result. But uh, a fan vote—that's something that we know. Then people really, really want it, and then it just have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next question I have for you guys is, you know, what was the first part you kind of started with designing the set? Um, was it the wings? Was it the body? Was it the, you know, these turrets here in the front section? You know, what did what was the key thing? You're like, okay, let me start here and then build off that. Yeah, um, I usually go and try to identify the, the key component that would uh, determine the size of the set. The question is, uh, does a model have a windscreen? In this case, it's, it's a big yes. So the, the windscreen, the cockpit area is quite prominent on this model. So the question is, uh, do we have existing pieces we could use or do we even have to create new elements? And as you know, our windscreen elements usually come in size of either four wide or six wide. Four wide is usually a very good size for a base set. But for UCS, uh, we have to go bigger. It means at least six wide. In this case, it turned out uh, the windscreen we used uh, for uh, Jedi interceptors have a quite quite good shape and size. And by using two of them, well, they pretty much get the cockpit area done with a nice uh, decoration, two different decorations, even in this case. And I went from pretty much from, from there. And then I knew, okay, this has to be at least six wide here, the whole body then eight wide. And from there, I, I, I grew the model, built the outline first until I got the proportions right. So yeah, we can say in, in many cases, there are certain elements that are just right that kind of determine the size of, uh, of a build. Yeah, and it's always nice if you can use existing pieces, yeah. in this case, uh, the, the interceptor mm. on the screen. Yeah. I like it, I feel it, it's very Lego. When I first saw the gunship, uh, originally I thought the uh, the ball turrets on the side of the ship, I thought they were the smaller, um, I guess they're, I don't know what the Lego element ID is, but I thought they were like the six by six sized ones. And when I pulled them out of the box, I realized I think these are like the eight by eight style um, little, I guess, I don't know what the exact name for this is, but it's the one that you find in like the, uh, the Mos Eisley Cantina on the top right here. It's actually the bigger size. Um, I was just like, oh, wow, this is just even bigger than I uh, originally thought it would be. Yes, yes. At first, I also looked into the, the smaller six wide uh, half ball elements, but they turned out a little too small. In fact, if you have a really close look at the reference, you will see that, that these balls are a little smaller than the ones in the wings, but uh, we don't have nine wide balls. So I went uh, with, with, uh, with an approximation in both cases. Also, uh, what I didn't, what I wasn't sure about if there are also gunners sitting in the wings. But it turned out these are more like automated turrets. Mm -hmm. and, uh, gunners or clone gunners are sitting in the, the front turrets. So they also needed uh, seating and, and a control panel, all the details. Well, I think it looks quite impressive with all of those features. <sighs> Was there a lot of uh, different complicated techniques used to build the gunship? Or did you have to come up with something new that uh, had never been done in a set you previously had designed? Um, and then what would you consider the overall difficulty? You know, this is obviously an adult 18 plus set. You know, would you consider this one of the more harder adult oriented sets or easier? Well, if you already build a Star Wars UCS sets in the past, you, are, you will be familiar with uh, any of the construction 
uh, principles who will find an internal frame that keeps everything together, holds together and supports the, the weight. Uh, in this case, I try to, to keep it uh, minimal because the one thing I personally am not too fond is uh, when I buy a Star Wars set and then I have to spend an hour just building a technic frame. Uh, I, I like a good mix of, of what yeah. they call system pieces and, and technic pieces. Yeah, and also we want visually, uh, we want the models to look like uh, like Lego system models. So, uh, but uh, but again, a technic is, uh, is something that is very often used for strength and for stability in the model. That's where it's super helpful uh, with the mix. Yeah, yeah, and I can see you already built uh, most of the frame. I guess you, you will agree it's not not overwhelming. It's just what is what is needed, and it's actually very narrow. I mean, the, the, the torso of the build of the model, so gunship is very narrow, and the internal structure is also very narrow. So I really try try to minimize it. And um, in one case, I could actually reuse a <coughs> technique, a building technique, mm -hmm. from the the play theme gunships we had a couple of years ago. Sorry, been a while. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, how the wings are, are attached. There's mm -hmm. no, no complicated technique involved. It's uh, really two, two technical slope bricks, the, the two folds. And the way you attach the wings, you put them on and push an axle through, a technique axle. Just a single and axle holds onto the wing? Is it, so just one axle holds onto the wing? Just wing. one axle holding a one, one wing. Jeez. Yes, so it couldn't be any easier. Well, that's awesome. I, I, I'm also really interested. I haven't gotten to the part, but I know there's a, it's like a, a little structure underneath the wing. Is that part of the wing or is that like uh, the wing itself is kind of sitting on it? It's like that dark red under part right there. Well, like, like a little, like a little winglet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, they, they don't support anything. They just close off uh, from base. So we don't like, we don't like holes, these <laughs> right? So it's just to, to as seamless as, as possible. So it's not, not needed for support, just to, for, for completeness. Um, I guess that leads into my next question, um, which isn't necessarily about the ship itself. And I know a lot of people are gonna wonder about this is what was the decision behind the figures you chose to include in this set? So those two being a Mace Windu minifigure and a Clone Trooper Commander. Yeah, the minifigures uh, in the UCS sets, you can actually more think of them as a decorative element because very often, as you also know, the UCS models, they are not in minifigure scale. And it's also the case here. So, uh, but we know people love minifigures. So we also love to add them to these UCS models. And, um, and it's, it's, of course, minifigures that make sense in the context. So here with the Clone Commander and uh, Mace Windu, we thought that was uh, uh, two pretty cool uh, candidates uh, for, for this set. And we are also very often uh, making these minifigures exclusive. So also in this case, uh, both Mace Windu and, uh, and, and the clone trooper have uh, new printed torsos, and heads, and the helmet is also a new one. In terms of minifigures, the stand is actually designed that you can take off two plates on the side. In case you don't wish to display uh, slightly too small minifigures with the gunship, just take off the, the plates from the... Stay where the minifigures are staying on there, you have just the gunship there and you can play with your minifigures somewhere else. But who wouldn't display these very cool minifigures with the wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would play with the minifigures somewhere else. Yeah, okay. Well, that's awesome, guys. Um, so that kind of leads into the next question, which is, so this is this is something I, uh, I was kind of wondering when I was looking at this set. I was like, could you do this? Um, <laughs> Uh, is there any way to remove all the rockets on the upper part of the launchers? Um, like in Attack of Clones, when the heroes are pursuing Count Dooku, obviously in that scene, they're like, we're out of rockets, sir. And, you know, they tried to blast them down. They couldn't. Um, is there a way to take those uh, elements out? Well, uh, actually, if you say rockets, I think the rockets are under the wings. But if, uh, the, if the, the projectiles here on yeah. top, and these uh, spinning magazines, I think these are uh, missiles. And in the movie, uh, uh, I remember the scene when Ganji was taking off, you look at it from, from the back and then these magazines spin and the, the missiles are loaded into the launchers. Yeah, you can say what's, what's happening here. That's really, you see, you see that, uh, there's a view down on the mm -hmm. Ganji where the rockets are rotating. So that's something we have incorporated into the model. That's 
we want to have it as as it is in the moon. So you say the rockets rotate. How does how does that function work? Well, it's let's say it's manually operated, but both magazines are linked, so they they, they spin. Yeah. Yes. But it's more, it is like if you turn one magazine, the other one would spin automatically the other way. But gotcha. it doesn't take long before you get to that in your own build. Mm -hmm. It will come by a surprise because you will expect to be continuing with something completely different. And then you will build the magazines and it will take a surprisingly long time because it's many small pieces. <laughs> How do you determine a set like this, especially, uh, where you've made a, a play scale model before, how do you determine the, the scale? Do you use other Ultimate Collector Series sets to kind of reference off of? Um, I know one recently that was launched last year in 2020 was the uh, UCS A-Wing, and that was a, a much bigger model, obviously. You know, do you take a, a look at that and kind of scale off things from there, or do you start somewhere else? Well, thank you. With this, uh, as also hands we're talking about here, we, decide, we are usually deciding uh, on a price that we would like to, uh, you say, a price point that suits the model. Uh, so that's that's one thing. And and then, uh, how do you say, scale is very different depending on what type of ship or model it is. As you say, the A-Wing, that's definitely another scale uh, than the gunship here. And if you take, for instance, a Star Destroyer, uh, it's a totally different scale. So. What we're thinking of here is actually it's, it's, that it's the right price, but also that it's a nice size model to display. Uh, we like to make them big generally because uh, that allows us to add uh, more detail. So, um, so that's so it's actually many factors that I, that uh, um, and then also sometimes it's determined by certain elements uh, that that give the right size of the model. And I think from there it uh, comes down to a designer's experience or how many loops designers need. I think usually, especially with uh, 3D design support, uh, we are usually pretty good at, at hitting things mm. on the head without uh, having to resize too much because we can pretty much see at all times where are we price-wise. Mm. Even at a stage where half the pieces are still missing, but with your experience, you can already guess how many pieces are still missing, how much do I need to add? Am I, am yeah. I over or does it fit? What, what other costs are there? Mm -hmm. we, have, or we have expensive printed elements, many minifigures, a big lineup of minifigures. So yeah, you have to calculate in your mind from there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think uh, recently we have gotten pretty good at Yeah. Uh, hitting the, the nail on the head, so to say, price-wise. No, I, I think it's uh, actually, I mean, I when I took the, the set out of the box, I was like, this thing is heavy, like very heavy. Um, so, it, and I'm sure when I'm finished with the model, it'll feel just as heavy as, I, as the box did. I'm actually, I've already finished the bag talking to you guys. I gotta go on the next one. So I apologize for the very loud clinking. I've been doing that all day. Yeah, people are used to it. Is there any new elements or new colored elements uh, in this set exclusively? Is there something that had to be recolored just for this set? Yeah, um, I think we don't have any new shapes in terms of elements, but we uh, have a few recolored elements in, in dark red. Uh, mm -hmm. What comes to mind is uh, these, yeah, on top of the, the engines and guns, there are four by four round bricks. I uh, think they were not available in dark red. They may have been available in, in the past, but they weren't mm. right now. So we have to. In the front, there are little one by two half bows, dark red. I think those we had to recolor. Yeah. Yeah. Also, mm. um, some lime green in, in the front. I think the, these bricks or these inverted bow bricks, one, one of them had to be a color change. So my next question is, we see the Republic gunship in both Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. What was the decision behind going Attack of the Clones for the theme for the gunship? Well, I think we, we talked about it here in the office and and, um, and I think it was a pretty easy decision. And also, if you noticed, when we had the poll uh, for the, uh, the different models, we used the picture from uh, from Attack of the Clones. Um, it is like the first appearance of the gunship, and yeah, we believe very impactful. The design of it is also different from uh, the one in uh, Clone Wars, where the one in Clone Wars doesn't have the big uh, the gun turrets on uh, on the sides. 
which actually is a super nice detail. And then one other thing is we know that there have been a lot of requests from fans about uh, that Lego should launch uh, more models from the prequel movies. So that was also uh, one of the uh, reasons for, for, for choosing this one. My last question for you guys is what would you consider to be the most interesting feature or design of the gunship? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, I like to ask good, tough questions. You will probably not guess it by looking at it, but at one point uh, I had the problem that I needed to find a, a ball joint for the, the front guns here, a big ball joint, not the, the small ones we've uh, been using for many, many years now, but it had to be quite, quite sizable. But uh, we don't have anything at this side, not even remotely close. So the, the trick here was to use uh, another element we recently developed, these little quarter ring elements, first found on the uh, uh, new X-wing, on the, on the engines. And when you take the smaller quarter and put them inside, then, then you get both. Mm -hmm. So you have the, the, the metallic inner workings of the, the ball joint and the, the white casing. So that was actually quite a neat solution to this problem, with, which otherwise would have probably uh, required a new element. But I think this looks even nicer and even more legal than uh, mm. a entirely new element would have. And that was a very, very nerdy detail from hands there. I'll just say what I about this, find impressive about this is simply the fact that we've done it. Finally, we've done a UCS version of the Republic gunship. The size of the model, the level of detail, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. Just the fact that it is a model, a useless model from the prequel trilogy is by itself uh, an achievement. Absolutely. I uh, I got to say that was definitely one of the, the cooler highlights. I was like, wow, that's actually really ingenious to use an existing element and use that newer element to combine the two and, and make it look like it has that illusion of looking a lot bigger. Uh, which is really, really honestly quite impressive. That was definitely something I almost immediately noticed when I, uh, I saw the box. I, I think you guys have really made quite the model and I, uh, I'm pretty confident in the uh, fan community reacting pretty positive to what you guys have made. Yeah, the nice part is you can immediately recognize it for, for what it is. It is like a, the space version of a, a, like an attack or transport helicopter. Mm -hmm. This narrow fuselage, the way the, the cockpit is located, guns here in the front, and the position of the, the passenger compartment. So it, it's clearly an, an assault dropship. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think that's definitely part of the appeal why so many people uh, are so in love with the design of this ship. Yeah, and mm -hmm. sometimes the simplicity also makes things a little easier for me because it doesn't have landing gear, nothing. It just lands up in its belly. Which saved me the trouble. Yeah, of landing gear. Yeah, of making a landing gear. So, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, we are really, really also uh, listening to what people are, are, are asking for uh, in that regard. So we're following different fora and so on. So we are, of course, we have our eyes open. So, uh, so we, we're we really, with these models and when selecting them, we're just trying to make everybody happy. That, that's really what it's about. And it's easy. If you pick something like a Millennium Falcon, and I would say also Republic Gunship, well, I think you hit it uh, for a lot of things. And Jens knows I like working on these big chunks of models, so it also makes me happy. Awesome, guys. Well, again, I really appreciate your time for being here. Thank you for answering my questions. I can't wait to finish this model. It is looking absolutely spectacular already. I'm seeing it through the webcam on you guys' end, and I'm just like, oh, I want to get there. I need to build this faster. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank you and You're enjoy welcome. the rest of the build. Yeah, absolutely. So I just finished bag number 12 out of 17. The next bag, 13, will actually be the very first wing of the gunship. So there's the two wings, the two rocket launchers, and the two turret pods here in the front. 
that are left. And actually there's a stand for this set. So there's still a good amount to be still built. But so far I am extremely impressed with the model. You can see the, uh, the doors here do indeed open. They swing open just like the playset model that we got in 2013. Uh, which is really cool. I, I gotta say the scale is massive. Other highlights that I'm just really, really impressed with other than the swinging doors here in the back is the rotating rockets. And we'll take a look at that here in a little bit once the model's complete, but I'm just looking around and just finding more and more amazing details and building techniques that I'm very impressed with personally. And it uh, surprisingly feels like I'm building a bigger gunship. Like it doesn't feel like a, like a big Technic model and you're just adding all these things. It literally just feels like you're building the playset 2013 Lego gunship, but just in a much bigger version. So this is continuing to be quite the builds. I'm ready to put these wings on. I'm ready to finish the model out. That is where we're headed now is finishing this gunship. I am beyond excited to fully finish it off. It is just, massive this way what are these wings going to look like that is what we're going to find out let's go ahead and continue onwards So, I have to say, this is uh, quite the uh, incredible model. <laughs> I am I'm kind of lost with words right now of just how big, how massive, how detailed, how accurate a UCS Republic gunship ever could be. It's just that good. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's that good. Uh, I have, wow. Just wow, just great job, Lego. This is, honestly, this might be my new favorite Ultimate Collector series set that I've ever owned. <sighs> just quickly going through some details. Believe it or not, there is some functionality to this gunship. First off, you have doors that open on both sides. Um, these are the back doors right here. Um, and they work very smoothly and they feel very sturdy and attached. What's really cool is up at the top, there is some rotating cannons um, and they actually are synced up by gears. So if you turn one, it turns the other. Um, and it looks just like Attack of the Clones when, it, when it's rising up from the Geonosis arena and you see that gunship flying off into what would be the very first Clone Wars battle. I mean, I'm just getting goosebumps thinking about that right now. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> um, I, I am fanboying out a little bit here. I will be honest. This thing is just that good. It includes two minifigures, a Mace Windu, and a Clone Trooper Commander figure. Some of the other details here is they, uh, there is some movable turrets, so you can uh, move them around. Again, just like how you see in the Geonosis Arena, uh, the clone troopers would be in these pods right here, and they're lasering all the battle droids and um, just getting in there and trying to get the Jedi out. Obviously, they are outnumbered. I'm just, wow. Whoo, boy. Oh boy. Uh, some other really cool details is the double uh, pods and the, and the wings. And then there's some uh, missile cannons on, on underneath both sides of the wings, as well as in the doors on both sides. And then we're not even to the front yet where there is a full detailed cockpit for both of these right here. So obviously the turrets here move in the front. So, oh, and one last thing, the, uh, the back portion here, this also opens up just like the real gunship as well. I am I am very impressed actually. There's even some detailing right here signifying where you hold on to the, I guess it's the netting for the gunship. Uh, for passengers, you can see Padme, Obi-Wan, and Anakin holding on to that uh, as they're uh, chasing Count Dooku and the Republic gunship. So yeah, all the details are here. I, I I'm just shocked. I didn't I didn't know you could get to this level of detail on such a vehicle like this. I'm so used to the playset version of this set and seeing something so big and so detailed is just quite a change. Also, I love this stand. It's actually 
really well integrated. It's uh, it's pretty cool how you attach it. It's not complicated. There's nothing uh, technical about it. Uh, you just simply line this white piece up here into the middle area of the bay, and uh, it just lays flat onto it very well. And it has the the gunship position, if you will, um, the kind of slope downwards, um, and it looks it looks good. It looks real good. There's also a back turret. I should also note, note that there is indeed a back turret on the gunship. I, I can't tell whether I like the doors closed or open on my on my model here. I don't know. It's it's up to you, I guess, if you want to have the doors open or not when displaying it. But where the heck is this going to fit on my shelves? This thing's huge. It's yeah. It's literally the width of my table. Exactly the width. And this is like 30 inches. That's crazy. Holy cow. That is that is a very wide gunship and it's so long too i think it's 27 inches something crazy long it was an honor to talk to hans and jens for the q a i wish i actually had the finished gunship so i could praise hans on his amazing amazing design here it really is quite something and and when it comes down to it if you're a fan of attack of the clones revenge of the sith clone wars or really just a star wars fan you are going to enjoy this model I know I'm going to be enjoying it for the years to come. Great job, Lego. Great job uh, on the on the design team because you guys have really made something something special.